Jackie and welcome back to my channel for this Queen's Gambit inspired tutorial. I love Beth's natural but still a little bit retro makeup look so I decided to show you guys this one and then I do have some different variations because I love the show and wanted to get a bunch of pieces that reminded me of it. So I did some shopping and I hope you guys enjoy this tutorial. If you do make sure you give it a thumbs up and subscribe for more pop culture videos and because this is 60s inspired and 60s is my favorite decade to pull inspiration from. I thought I would showcase my merch line. So I haven't really talked about this that much, but I made this 60s style crew neck. So this features a bunch of my favorite 60s recreations that I've done that you can find on this channel. And yeah, it will be linked down below in the down bar as well as right before the comments. You can see all the different pieces in the collection. So I hope you guys will check it out if you're looking for a new sweater. And let's get started with this look. I have my skin hydrated and I've been loving the Halo Honey Moisturizer from Pharmacy. My skin felt a bit dry and this completely saves it. I also added on any past blemishes or even current ones so that there's no added like dry flaky texture when I apply the foundation and powder. And I've also prepped the lips with the Laneige Lip Sleeping Mask. These are winter favorites that I love. It is currently a snowstorm as I'm recording this. And for foundation, I'm using my favorite, the Rare Beauty Foundation. It looks super fresh. I added in a dot of a lighter L'Oreal concealer. This helps lighten up the foundation a bit and it takes out the natural redness in my skin. It gives me a blank canvas to work with. Plus, the Rare Beauty is my most used foundation ever. I love the texture. A little goes a long way. And adding in a bit of a higher coverage concealer does make it a higher coverage foundation. And I'm using a bit of powder to set the skin in areas that I crease. And because Beth is so pale, it looks a bit flat without adding in some of those natural contours back. So I'm applying under my cheekbones, blending out, as well as defining my chin, slightly my jawline. I usually use Nudie from Too Faced, which is an eyeshadow, but it's a great shade for when I'm this um, skin tone. And time for nose contour. I'd never done an Anya Taylor Joy inspired look, so I always get nervous when I'm trying to recreate a new face. So hopefully I did okay, but I'm creating more depth between the eyes and the nose bridge. Beth's lip shape is always super defined with a cupid's bow, so I'm accenting that dip between the lips to make that part stand out. Of course, I always say this, but in case you're new, transforming always just gives me a bit of a challenge. It's super fun to do, but you can always take inspiration from the base of the makeup look, like the eyeliner style, the products I'm using, you can try the lipstick look, um, and just add it into your own beauty routine. You do not have to go full transformation, but it's a fun way to have a topic every week and give you guys new makeup tips in a fun way. Got the contours done as best as I can today and it's time for blush. So I love the original Rare Beauty formula, but today I'm using the latest launch and on my fingers, I'm patting it up the cheekbones and this looks very natural and is perfect for barely there type of looks. Go with a muted rosy tone, whatever product you have. And then I'm going to add the spotlight highlight a little later. Usually I do all my skin steps first, but I didn't today and let's move on to brows. Her brows are cool toned while her hair is warmer, gives a nice contrast. So I'm gonna brush up my brows and I'm using the shade 3.5 and adding in some stray hairs. And then with the shade five also from Benefit Precisely My Brow, I'm gonna add um, again a really light hand, adding in a couple strokes in the sparse areas. I've been really liking blending these two together. I can like fake the shape with 3.5 and then add in a bit of dimension. Beth has gorgeous skin and it tends to look very fresh and dewy. So my favorite highlighter is the Spotlight Highlight. And if you're interested in Charlotte Tilbury products, I do have a full brand review. This is one of the top products that I recommend, so I'll have that linked as well. A highlight always helps to create more of a convincing contour. I love to apply it to the tip of my nose in the nose bridge. And let's move on to shadow. It's very subtle. We're gonna take a matte gray brown and apply all over the lid and up into the crease. I deepened up the outer portion of the eye a bit more. We're gonna keep this blended, but her eyes are very wide set, so I'm focusing the shadow further outwards. I've been reaching for the That's Taupe palette quite a bit for simple makeup looks, but I'm never sure with ColourPop how long their collections are available. See the shades at the side, and as always with recreations, you can use any products that you already have and just try to color match. 
Moving right onto eyeliner, I popped on some brown contacts and my favorite for my upper lash line, again more Rare Beauty, is the Rare Beauty Perfect Strokes Liner. It's so easy to use and I like to paint it along my lash line in the center. I always start along the lash line to make sure the eyeliner has a good amount of product on the brush and get a sense of what I'm working with. And then I'll create the wing, which in this case is a little bit higher than the end of your natural lash line, and then pull this wing outwards and we're going to go back in and build up the line in the center of the eye a bit more. I love this subtle eyeliner look, I think it's perfect for every day with a retro feel and the rest of the look is more barely there. Then with a light eyeliner pencil, something like Anastasia Pro Base for this benefit brightening eye pencil, start to apply on the outer waterline. You can also apply this to the inner corner and under the lash line. If you want to make your eyeliner pop, take that lighter shade and draw it right above the eyeliner. I love using this product because it does have such a fine um, tip so it's very easy to use. Wiped off my lips and I'm adding a touch of mascara. Her lashes weren't all that noticeable until the bolder 60s look, which I will be recreating as well, so keep on watching for that. And the lip shape is like two triangles, and this is my go-to lip liner. It's Iconic Nude from Charlotte Tilbury. And then I've padded over a light pink to recreate the scene where Beth is super hungover, but she still manages to look very pretty, especially in this mint dress. I was so happy to find this replica. It was not very expensive and it looks the exact same. I just had to steam it because it did have some wrinkles. This scene, her hair was a little messier, so I'm keeping it loose and I totally ran out of lighting. So here's the next day where I recreated the same look. And make sure to comment down below the pop culture password, which is chess can also be beautiful. And let me know in the comments as well if you play chess. I never learned, but I can beat my boyfriend repeatedly at checkers, so I think that's brag worthy. I'm adding an authentic 60s fragrance. This is the Eau de London by Yardley. And another lip combo that Beth wears is a muted orange base red. So this is the ZC and Picasso collection. I featured these really cool products in a Fallon from Dynasty transformation recently. And I was obsessed with the Picasso lipstick. And finally, my favorite Beth makeup moment when she's inspired by the 60s pop star on screen. So to switch up her makeup, I'm taking the Too Faced Killer Liner in this gray shade, and I'm going to draw on a 60s inspired dramatic crease. So with my eyes staying open, I'm going to create a subtle half moon shape slightly above my natural crease, but I usually overdo this more. So this to me is like a bit more of a toned down version and I'm making it super simple. I've etched in the initial shape and then I'm thickening up the outer portion and starting to fade it into a triangle. And then with a blending brush, I'm going to soften out this edge and these liners are very easy to blend and control. I changed up that eye look in 10 seconds, it's really fast. And then to make the lid pop, I'm still using the That's Taupe palette and I'm using this silvery shade all across the lid. And I've had a couple questions if I've ever tried magnetic lashes in my comments. So I did have this pair from Kiss that I got in PR a while ago. I never tried it, so let's give it a try. I'm painting on the liner adhesive, adding a bit more drama to my liner and then popping on these lashes and my first thought was, oh my God, that was so easy and not messy. There was no little white glue um, showing, which often happens, but the inner corner I did struggle with like always. Finally, the bold liner underneath, which the first time I saw this, I honestly thought it was ugly, but then I thought, you know what, it's kind of fun. So I switched up the eyeliner I'm using. I decided to go with this Perfect Diary pen because it's a bit thinner than the Rare Beauty one. So I felt like I'd have more control. And this is another pen that I really like as well as the MAC Brush Stroke Liner. I feel like all of the ones I recommend have very similar applicators and that's the type of liner I love. I'm recreating that lip shape lightly and then I'm mixing two sheer metallic shades. First one is from MAC, it's a very pale champagne shade. And then I brought in more of a purpley shimmery shade to give more depth. And the first lipstick totally reminds me of the Yardley lipstick ads from the 60s with very paled out and pearly shades. And I added my boyfriend's coat last minute inspired by her full look and let me know in the comments which version um, of Beth's looks was your favorite and stay tuned for a mini Beth inspired haul. As for shopping, I find a lot of TV and film inspired stuff on Poshmark because I just put in keywords. So this really cool green turtleneck that has like half sleeves, which she wears a lot of tops like that. I found this for like, I don't know, $13 or something off Poshmark and 
I love it I think it's super cool and then other things that I got I also thrifted this chunky knit sweater which is like a perfect fit for her meltdown scene and also this is from Amazon so you can find a lot of stuff on Amazon that's where I got the wig and the dress as I mentioned and surprisingly good quality like I thought based on the picture of this wig it was gonna be very bad but it works out perfectly and I think it's really great for the price and then the last piece that I just got kind of unrelated but like could totally be in the mo um, not movie in the series as well is this slip dress I love this this is from the brand Majorelle or is it Majorelle don't know but this is from Revolve and I just got it I love the detailing it's so girly and pretty I can't wait to wear this in the spring but I also think that this just suits her character so I hope you guys enjoyed this video and if you're looking for more 60s inspiration check out this 60s ad recreation I did it's one of my favorite videos and I do feature a couple really cool vintage products like the perfume I showed or maybe you're looking for a more pop culture inspiration you should definitely check out the Bridgerton series of hairstyles I did and I'll see you in my next one <laughs>